Then we have Republic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Res publica. Res is things, matters, and affairs. The etymology, publica, is people. So matters, affairs, things of the people. So once again, so you want to, so you have a Republican form of government. So we're looking at form of government, all right? Republican, because you can have a a national government that's a republic. Right. I mean, your national government where the power derived from the people, all right? You have a Confederate government that is a you know where you look at it can also be a republic. It means you have the independent, free, sovereign states. All right, so this understanding language, the etymology, their true intent of words, the well settled meaning of words. So, so this is so very important to understand language. All right, now one of the, the third, I'm going to combine the third and fourth elements of uh, creation of European newly uh, created states, counties, cities, towns, etc. Just want to keep everything on point. The third and fourth element, and this is where I want Shem to get into, the third element is survey, and the fourth element is architectural drawing and engineer development plan. Now keep in mind, we did not say land. We said, now we're talking about creation of European newly created states, counties, cities, towns, etc. survey, Number three, number four, architectural drawings and engineering development plan, which means that these states are mere on paper. Now, when we're talking about this, I want Chim to go into jurisdiction. Jurisdiction in, related, in relations to survey, architectural drawings, and engineering development plan. Yes. You're going to look back first at one of one of one of the books that is being misused is a, is a is a positive law dealing with culture and Jew Prudence books uh, dealing with equity is the Bible. In the Bible, the seer don't move an old property now. These lines can never be removed because they were set by a seer from the river so and so to the lake of so and so to the mountain of so and so to the rock of so and so. No modern state can draw up a survey map to ever remove that was already promised to a people anciently the people that descent and kinsmanship of them people no matter if they go under conquest by war please hear me out once the peace is settled after the war the ruling sultan or emperor king always allowed the nation to possess the ancient right to culture and their monarchy and their government as long as the legions the, the legions is to the sultan the head emperor or empress this is the no i'm looking back i got to look back to answer this when you see the new survey maps treaties entered by new communities i call them communities new tribes that are formed on the earth and they they sign treaties with the descent of these people the descent and kinsmanship and when they sign these succession treaties and they drop these maps, they're not territorial maps. They have no effect absolutely whatsoever over the territorial sovereignty that was conveyed by the seers or the prophetess, the foreseers, that first drawn out. No one can remove that. What happens is that sovereign allows that foreign government to exercise a jurisdiction a jurisdiction is like a shelf let me explain what i mean a shelf is something creates connected to the seaboard that's the soil like a house a bridge or an erection excavation placed in the ground that's considered a shelf the political jurisdiction occupying jurisdiction is only in what is built or what is occupied by that foreign sovereign on the permission of that foreign government. Territorial sovereignty mean fishing, agriculture, minerals, and wealth. That's, tied, that's not tied to conquest. 
or the or, or occupying sovereignty. The occupying sovereign is allowed to use it to do it based on a peace treaty, a commerce treaty. Without that, that'll be an act of war. Because the treaty does not allow the foreigner to use the natural resources. And if they allow them to use it, they pay a tribute to use them. So survey maps are made based on can, uh, 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 grants, treaties, relinquishing jurisdiction. Now, can a sovereign sell a piece of algae culture? to a foreigner in violation of a SIA covenant. That's a violation. Let me explain what I mean. When the Netherlands, thank you, Professor Abdullah, for finding this case. Professor Abdullah researched and found a case when Spain, I think it was Spain, Spain, secession treaty to the United States. The Netherlands stepped up because they considered themselves to be an occupying possessor before Spain had that power to convey it, and the United States was not even formed there. So they stepped and said, wait a minute, before you was even doing business, we already was here, occupying the political dominion. And they, they won without even a fight. Now, let me explain what I mean. When one make a claim, like the, the Muslim world do right now, the, the Muslim Arabs, the ultimate empire, the reason why they're still in power, Please hear me. They are making a claim to ecclesiastical profit and that land that was conveyed and taken at the permission of a prophet or a prophetess, that property line cannot be moved or disturbed. So the surveys for anciently has been fraud, fraud been committed. Because the ain't that they had no listen, they have no right. No, the people that made the treaties, session treaties, with the European powers, the European and, and, and the European powers drawing up the treaties, this is how you fall into conquest without a war, through language. When they draw it up in language, there's nobody protesting, like under the 1744 Lancaster Convention Treaty, the Erie Corps Moors came down and protest against the conveyance in treaties where England did with the people that consider indentured service more subjects to the Air Accords. Why did the Air Accords came down and, and, and oppose that? The Air Accords were talking about a Toctaw possession coming from the earth. You can explain it. You explain it. Atochinus. Atochinus. Atochinus from the earth. Yeah, yes. Atochinus. Atochinus from the from earth. From the earth. That's right. That means from they put the pedigree. And also, they operate on the highest principle of seership. You are conveying mm -hmm. something that a seer, our seers say, that was ours, conveyed to us by investing through the cosmos, the unseen power. What also deals with the first maximum law, first in time, first in law. Yes. So, being the first in time custodian of what has we have been placed custodians of the earth yes, yes. now i love that you brought that up because i want to give some people some biblical reference to that um about moving your neighbor's boundary markers now it's in proverbs 22 28 it's saying i'm just going to read two different versions the first version is the new international version it say do not move an ancient boundary stone set up by your ancestor. Okay. Now the King James Version is say, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Oh. Now, typically it will say mother, but we understand the King James Version operates on a patriarchal system. So that's why it has the reading of father in there. Um now, you can also look in the Quran and we'll also have readings regarding um, um, the, 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 you know, what will take place in the event that you violate the boundaries of, of one of your um, fellow brothers and kinship. Now, also, if you look at um, one of the things you have to also consider when we're looking at these elements is that the Christian codes well, that's that has been 
placed into a civil matter. Now, you, you can recall that Congress deemed the Bible to be law, which the to be that's covenants. Right. That's, what the law, that's right. Absolutely. Law of the land. So, which means that these are covenants that one could utilize for their protection. And this is one of the covenants. Now, if your boundary mark is being moved that was set up by your ancestor, that's a violation of the covenant. So that was important for you to raise that up for understanding, for people to understand that, especially when you're dealing with the autochthonous in of the land as well as the ants, you know, uh, I don't like to say descendants because that's like saying, you know, we are the you know, the kins. We are the kin, the kinship. And you know, we talk about language. We're gonna throw the word family <laughs> out the window because we're not a serve, we're not That's servants right. to That's we're right. kins, kin folks, generation. We have we're generations, we have a heritage and we have a culture. Yes. So with that in mind, we're gonna take more look into we're gonna go ahead and move the next piece on the board. Let's talk about the Articles of Association of October the 20th, 1774. We're gonna go ahead and move upon. So there's different pieces on this board game that are being moved and played. And the thing about it is a lot of people don't know how the game is being played. Right. So the first move, you can't move, uh, you can't move a rook, you can't move a knight, you can't move a bishop, you may, can't move the king or queen without first getting the pawns out the way. So first, let's go ahead and get the pawn out the way. And we're going to start off with the Articles of Association of October the 20th, 1774. And I'm going to read this and we're going to, let's analyze this in the context of what is being understood. Now, and as well as status. Let's look at the status in his reading, understand the status, because as it reads, we, his majesty's most loyal subjects, the delegates of the several colonies of New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Now, if you also look at the writing of the word new, it'll say in, in the Federalist paper, it'll say new hyphen York, new hyphen Jersey. Pennsylvania, the three lower counties of Newcastle, Kent, and Sussex of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, deputy to represent them in a continental congress held in the city of Philadelphia on the 5th day of, October, of September, sorry, 1774, avowing our allegiance to his majesty, our affection and regard for our fellow subjects in Great Britain and elsewhere, affected with the deepest anxiety and most alarming apprehensions at those grievance and distresses with which his majesty's American subjects are oppressed and having taken under our most serious deliberation, the state of the whole continent find that the present unhappy situation of our affairs is occasioned by erroneous system of colony administration adopted by the British ministry about the year 1763 evidently calculated for enslaving these colonies and with them the British Empire. Brother Abdullah, could you go into this, this move that was made of Articles of Association that took place? All right, if you, if you heard Tamar read that the subjects are acknowledging, the British subjects are acknowledging themselves as British subjects. It is clearly there the these british subjects were born and raised in the british dominion on moorish soil their parents british subjects born and raised in the british dominion and moorish soil their grandparents born and raised on the in the british dominion on moorish soil their great grandparents you know great great grandparents born and raised in England, you know, as British subjects. Now, still British subjects. So, 
What changed? Like, how did his status change? Let's really analyze that. How did this, the claim today, just verbally, because it's not true, that they are no longer British subjects, that they're sovereigns, that they're on equal footing, on equal footing as the king of Great Britain, or the crown, or the king of France, or the king of Spain, or the king of the Netherlands. They're on an equal footing. Remember, these are descendants of British subjects, but now they're sovereigns. How can that be? Give me the principle by upon which that claim is made. What is the principle? We just accept it. We, not, we don't analyze because we're not taught the fundamental foundational principles. By what principle is that claim made? Let's look back. 500 years, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 years. What did that happen? What is subjects, born, their parents are subjects, grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-parents, mm -hmm. and then they write construction instruments, and now they're no longer subjects. They're on an equal footing as the dukes, earls, knights, dukes, earls, the, uh, 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 the counts, barons, baroness, marquis, dutch, duchesses, king, queens, they're on the same, they're on the same level. Where's that based in? This is making these, making these claims because they know that the masses don't have the mind of a jurist. The masses, that includes the British subjects and the Moors, who are also British subjects. <laughs> so British subjects and British subjects. Right. Moors, classified Negro color black, British subjects, right. and then some are Spanish subjects, mm -hmm. all right? Some are Dutch subjects, right. all right? Some are French subjects, Moors, who are French subjects, Moors who are British subjects, Moors who are Dutch subjects, Moors who are Spanish subjects, all right? Or more soil on the title Negro color black. All right, why you say that, Abdullah? All right, here we go. Negro is a Spanish subject. Spain, even to this day, has claim over Negro. Mm -hmm. There's Spanish subject. An Indian is a British subject to this very day. 1926 case between Great Britain on behalf of the Kakayugi tribe and the United States. 1926 in the International Court of Justice. The well-settled case, the stare decisive case in the International Court of Justice. A Indian is a British national. 1926 case, Great Britain versus the United States. So I don't want, I'm not coming out of my air. I'm just, I got to give, well, so long, I got to give them cases. Got to give them cases. Black, a British subject. So these, so we're going to clear again that Writing an instrument does not change. Once again, they acknowledge their status. Yes, the they wrote this article association. Terrence, let's put that back on the board. I'm not sure if you had it queued up at the time. That article association, October the 20th, 1774. You have it up? Okay. They declared it. We, His Majesty's most loyal subjects. We. It didn't say we the people of America. It be. reads, we, his majesty's most loyal subjects, the delegates, delegate, they are delegated, appointed of the several colonies of New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island colony, put the bird colony behind it, Connecticut colony, New hyphen york colony new hyphen jersey colony pennsylvania colony 
the three lower counties of Newcastle, Kent, and Sussex on Delaware Colony, Maryland Colony, Virginia Colony, North Carolina Colony, South Carolina Colony. They were uh, dep uh, de deputed to represent them in a Continental Congress. Now, the word Continental is misleading. It's very misleading, and, and we're going to have Brother Abdullah go into that word. We're going to address that. The word continental is very misleading. Let's get into that word. All right, before I get into it, I want to address something. I want to challenge something. Right. I, 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 this is what I challenge. Mm -hmm. Thinking like a jurist, I challenge the claim that's made in this instrument that they're delegates. I challenge that. Where is the instrument mm -hmm. from a Lord proprietor of the colony or a royal on a royal colony? It would be a governor appointed by the crown that delegated them to be delegates. Once again, they're taking them on themselves. You have the Lord Proprietors, William Penn is a Lord Proprietor. Duke of York is a Lord Proprietor. Duke of York, his brother Charles II, granted New York to his brother in 1664 in the charter. William Penn, Charles II, in 1682, granted William Penn a charter. These are two, Lord Baltimore. These are Lord proprietors. So this is a colonies under proprietorship. Then you have what's called royal colonies, which are whereas the the governor of the colony is appointed directly by the crown. Then you have colonies that are under the corporate control, as in Virginia Company. Right. All right. So the either the Virginia or a company. What, where is the delegation authority order from a Lord proprietor, a royal, a governor of a colony, delegating them to be delegates? They're using these names, North, you know, Virginia and North Carolina and South Carolina. So when you're reading, thinking like a jurist, where is that delegation authority order? All right, so let's get into let's get into continental. Yes, let's get into continental. All right. Now we have there's seven continents. Two of the seven: North America, South America. And this is 1774, right? In 1774, Spain occupied. The Louisiana area, Spain, mm -hmm. in 1774. Remember that was ceded from from France to Spain in 16, 1762. So Spain. So you have Spain. You have 1774, right? Mm -hmm. Great Britain, mm -hmm. Canada, Northwest Territory, 13 colonies. That's Great Britain. That was it. So you say the, as we talk about in North America now, right? That colony. So Continental you, Congress was the French still on the scene? No, not the French was no okay. longer. Okay, the French was no yeah, longer on the were, scene. They were French subjects right. there, but, but they had French, seated there. French, French had seated. Yes. All right. Okay. So yes. Now, Continental Congress. Based on the word Continental Congress, we have an adjective there. AL is an adjective suffix ending pertaining to Congress. It's a continental Congress. That means that based on the term, the term that, that this Congress has jurisdictional control and territorial sovereignty control over the entire North America and legislating. So that's what's again, it's words, analyzing words. 
All right. All right, let's make another move on this chessboard. Let's go to the Declaration of Independence of 1776 and analyze what is the Declaration of Independence? Is it a royal charter or English land grant? C, is it an English royal letter patent? D, is it a compliment letter drafted by English subjects? Oh, I'm sorry, complaint letter. Sorry, is it a complaint letter drafted by English subjects? Or E, is it an ecclesiastical degree from the Pope whom act as a seer? What say you? <laughs> All right. Is it a is it a is it is it a decree from the Pope, the seer? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. All right, I'm a subject. I'm a, I am a English subject. You're an English subject. Tam was an English subject. We got complaints. We take a piece of paper, and we have the piece of paper. We're drafting. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Remember, remember, keep in mind, we're English subjects. Mm -hmm. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, to, among these are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We're no longer English subjects. <laughs> we're no longer English subjects, y'all. All right, where's that? Is, is that well settled? You're on foreign soil. Your parents English subjects, grandparents English subjects. You, you, so does this? Does, does the instrument make you on equal footing? Make us on equal footing as the barons, dukes, earls, counts, countants, Danes, Dutch, duchesses. Is that well settled? What say ye? Well, you're taught in the schools that that instrument, the Declaration of Independence, made them independent from Great Britain, that they declared their independent from Great Britain. Right. Last week, they just celebrated, you know, Ratification Day. Last month. Last month. Last month, they celebrated Ratification Day. So is it a complaint letter? It's a complaint letter. So the answer is D. From written, <laughs> drafted by English subjects. Mm -hmm. Drafted by English subjects in the British Dominion on Moy soil. Once again, a complaint letter drafted by English subjects in the British Dominion, operating in the British Dominion on Moy soil. Let's look at the drafting of this. Let's go to the 1777 drafting of Articles of Confederation. Um, let's look at the excerpt of the Articles of Confederation. Now it reads, to all to whom these presents shall come, we the undersigned delegates of the states affixed to our names send greetings where the delegates of the United States of America in Congress assembled did on the 15th day of November in the year of our Lord 1777 and in the second year of the independence of America agree to certain articles of confederation and perpetual union between the states of New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island and Providence Plantation, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia in the words of the following viz. Now, Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union between the states of New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island, 
and Providence Plantation, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and Georgia. 